So this is the uh, cheapest welder that Harbor Freight sells, and of course, because it's cheap, the, uh, it's AC. Very few MIG welders, uh, to my understanding, are AC, so today I'm going to show you how to convert it into DC. So uh, for parts, you will need, of course, a rectifier. Uh, this is a 150 amp. You can also buy uh, 100 amp. Um, those are only a couple of dollars cheaper, and I think um, even though that's a 90 amp welder short circuit, it will probably exceed uh, 100 amps. So I just bought a 150 amp one, just uh, so that way I know you know, this, this will definitely work in all conditions. Uh, you can get these shipped to your door for about $15. Next, of course, you will need a heat sink. This is very important because this thing will get screaming hot. So we need some way to um, get that heat out of there. And um, heat sink compound would be nice. Um, not super critical. You could just put this directly on the heat sink. It would probably be good enough, but I'm going to put heat sink compound on there because I have it and that'll keep this extra cool. The lifespan of your rectifier or any, uh, you know, solid state electronic is based on the temperature. So the hotter this gets, the, of course, the less it's going to last. And if you get it really, really hot, it will actually fail outright. Um, then you'll need a smoothing capacitor. Uh, this is it because, of course, then you get pulse DC, and then this capacitor will actually smooth that DC out and give you a nice um, constant DC. This is really nice. This is actually um, an audio capacitor. And of course, you see Pioneer on there. This is the name brand. I pulled this out of an amplifier. This is um, rated for 56 volts. I believe I measured the welder open circuit. I believe it's um, 21 volts. So, uh, actually, after you rectify the voltage increases because uh, the 21 volts is the average voltage of that AC. So in order to determine what the voltage will be after rectification is I'll take that 21 volts, I'll divide it by 0 0.707, and that gives me 29.7, so basically 30 volts uh, after rectification. So even though it's 21 volts AC, I'm actually going to get 30 volts uh, DC, so divide by 0 0.707. And so of course 30 volts is less than the 56 that this is rated for, so this is good. You don't want to really approach that number. If I did the math and this welder was going to be like 55 volts, I would probably not use this capacitor. Uh, you want to get, leave a little bit of a margin. The margin there isn't actually built in because, of course, most people don't deal with capacitors. This is an electrical engineering thing, so you are expected to put in the safety margin. The safety margin does not come pre-installed on the capacitor rating, so you're expected to do that. So this should give me plenty of rating, and with this being 2200 microfarads, this should be more than enough. Uh, I'll, I have a second one if I need, but this should really smooth it out. Even though it's a high current, you need a high capacitance to keep that DC voltage 22, smooth. 22,000? Oh yes, you're right, 22,000. Whatever I said was wrong. Um, do you, yeah, in order to keep that really smooth, at that high amperage, of course, the higher the amperage, the more capacitance you need to keep that DC smooth. So this should be nice. I do have a second one if I need. And then just some wire crimps and heat shrink tubing would be great. Nonsense like that, make it real nice. But however, whatever you have, doesn't matter. I've, you have a Harbor Freight welder, I'm sure you're not made of money. <laughs> so um, just took a razor knife and I reached in there and I cut off the uh, insulation around the two wires coming out of the output of the transformer. Then I just reached in and I just cut off this crimp. That left me enough length everywhere except for the ground clamp. So what I can do is I can just unscrew this, push the ground clamp wire into the welder a little bit, and then everything else should reach just fine. So what we have here is we have a little bit of a sense wire that was attached. Uh, actually, there's one on either side. So what I just made sure I crimped this on to a little lug and I screwed it in so it's still connected to the transformer. I don't want to put this wire on the DC side because it's designed for AC and there'll be another one on the other side. I made sure I kept these wires on the same phase. Shouldn't matter, but just to be OCD. And I think actually this transformer might have aluminum windings because if you look here, that actually looks a lot like aluminum. And um, I used these crimps. They actually don't look like it. But you can see here, I had to actually uh, drill them out. These are actually solid copper on the inside, so these should take current uh, really well. And then what we'll do is we'll take this wire here, which goes to our gun, and this will be negative, and that'll go right here. And then the ground clamp will be positive for flux wire. All right, took out this clamp and uh, moved the ground wire in. So now the, the ground is a little bit longer, so it'll reach that rectifier. Just tied up the heat sink with a little bit of steel wire just to stop this from shaking. Then up at the top here where I did the knot, I put a little bit of heat shrink tubing on it so just so I don't cut myself on that steel. Got a couple of wires soldered on my capacitor. I'm gonna go ahead and shove that in there. All right, I taped up that capacitor just so it wouldn't flop around. And there we have, you can see all of our nice little lugs all screwed in there. Let's give it a try. Seems like it's getting good enough airflow. Not a whole lot, but it should be good enough. Now this doesn't have a bleed down resistor. So here's what happens if we pull the trigger and then if we um, ground this out, you'll see 
Now that's just the contents of our capacitor. Uh, so this capacitor doesn't bleed down by itself. So you just gotta keep that in mind um, after you run this, it's still charged. And that's just, that right there was just that capacitor discharging. There should be plenty of capacitance. That's a pretty beefy kick. Uh, you could always add a bleed down resistor. There are ways to calculate that. Um, I may do it at some point. It's unlikely, but it's, I, I might do it. Um, you just want, uh, you know, really high resistance. So when you sh let go of the trigger, the capacitor discharges over the course of maybe, you know, five or eight seconds or something. You don't want a too high resistance because you don't want, you know, sucking up any of your power and producing heat and burning up. So what I'll probably do is I'll do some welds with this, see how they look. And also I want to see how hot that gets and make sure that stays cool. So I've been doing some welding on the truck. Of course, according to the instructions on this welder, you're supposed to weld two minutes on, what, eight minutes off. Uh, I've been welding for maybe eight or 10 minutes on, three to five minutes off. So I've been doing quite a bit of welding here on the truck for the past 20, 30 minutes. Uh, this um, rectifier here has actually never gotten above uh, about 115 degrees. So you can see now it's, oh shit, it's already 77. This thing cools off super fast. I would, there's the 94, the rectifier itself. I think about 115 degrees or so, it gets to a point where it's producing so much heat, the differential, the temperature differential between the air and the uh, rectifier is, is so great that it's able to self-sustain and kind of cool. And I don't think it'll get a whole lot above 115 degrees. It's good to take a break too, because yeah, that transformer is actually pretty toasty. I could always add a second fan to this. I don't think I'm gonna bother. I think that's good enough, because of course transformer gets hot too. That needs a chance to cool down. So I think all in all, the rectifier can keep just as cool as a transformer and shouldn't have to worry about it. The capacitor is a little bit warm to the touch, not hot, but just warm enough that you can tell that it's warm, which is kind of kind of funny because, I mean, that's a lot of current that's going through that capacitor. <clears throat> Better than Lucas's. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. Yeah, man. There it is. So this is super crazy today. That right there is Balin the Mia. And we are going to do something really stupid today. Keep your tail wide, your Balin might die. He's making me uncomfortable. Go, Balin! You riding this? What the fuck is happening? Balin said not to talk crap about this camera. It's a piece of shit. This is so unbelievably sketchy. Why would you put me through this, you jerk? That's the power of really old engineering. It'd be nice if it didn't kill me, it's not required. I felt it fucking pop. Make a wish, everyone. Make a wish. Not okay. <laughs> you went too far. This guy, man, this guy.